What's up, guys? What's going on? I'm Paul. This is Pauline Theology's Daily Devotional, man, with Trust in Jesus Ministries. And we're going through the book of Genesis. We're in Genesis 38, 12 through 19. We're in the story of Judah and Tamar. Uh, previously, we saw the sons of Judah and uh, their death and then him keeping one to the side, sending Tamar away. Well, we're about to see what happens uh, after a little time. So if you haven't checked out, read Genesis 38, 12 through 19. Stop the tape. Check it out. See what it has to say. Come back and we'll answer the four questions. If you've already read it, let's look no further. Let's go ahead and dive on in. The first question is what is going on in the narrative? What's actually happening in the narrative? Well, we find that Judah's wife has passed away. She's died. And so since she's died, she takes some time to grieve. And then after he grieves, he heads down to uh, Timna, where he's got to <clears throat> shear his sheep. Now, I think uh, we saw a little bit about that with Laban, how it's going to take an extended period of time, a lot of stuff going on. Laban went down to help. But we also uh, uh, further find that um, in, in uh, later on during Jewish history, uh, Israel at time, they actually have parties like that. And it's a celebration uh, for, for some kind of season. And so it could be the fact that that is happening. And then he's just overseer of the sheep that he's headed down that way. But he picks up his buddy. And so I think that might actually be the main reason is trying to give comfort from his buddy, the Adulamite. And um, and so he heads down there to Timna. And whenever he heads down to Timna, somebody has told Tamar about Reuben, or not Reuben, Judah headed that direction. And so when she hears about that and she knows that uh, 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 that Shayla, uh, Judah's child is of age to marry and he hasn't given, given her to him. And so she fixes up her own plan, devises her own scheme in order to, uh, fulfill the duty that she feels she's called to do in honor of her husband to establish his family with a seed. And so she takes off of her uh, widower's clothes and puts on a veil and some perfume, man, and then heads out to this um, this uh, uh, place called uh, Anaim. And it's on the way or on the path to Timna from, um, it's on the way uh, to, to Timna. And so she sits there and waits in this place for Judah to pass by. And when, which is, is kind of funny because the place is called uh, uh, Anaim or um, she sits, it's called like Patak Anaim, which could mean like to open the eyes. And so what she's trying to do is either open his eyes to prostitution so that he would stop and solicit her, or it's also a, a play in which his eyes are closed to who she really is because um, he doesn't recognize that that's his daughter-in-law, the one whom he has, uh, he's supposed to, to uh, give Shayla to. But anyway, um, this place, he stops by and sees her, and then he propositions her. He's like, hey, man, uh, let, me, let me have sex with you. And she doesn't say anything, but okay, but uh, what will you give me? And he says, I'll give you, a goat, a young kid from a flock because he's headed down to shear the sheep. So when he goes down there, he's going to get one, send it back her way. And she's like, okay, but give me a pledge until you give it to me. He's like, okay, well, what pledge do you want? And then this is where she really gets it going because she's like, well, give me your signet ring, your cord and your staff. And the reason she wants these things is because those are identifying markers as to who she is about to have this deed with. And so now she's going to have Judah's stuff and say, this is Judah who has done this to me. Smart girl, man. She's trying to get it. And so Judah's like, yeah, that's cool. I'll take that, man. Yeah, let me get the stuff. And then I'll, uh, uh, he's like, yeah, let me get the stuff and then I'll get it to you. And so they, uh, they have sex. And then he gives her or he gives her the stuff They have sex. And then he leaves. And then she leaves and she goes back and she takes off of her uh, widower's clothes or she takes off of her, her veil and all this stuff and puts back on her widower's clothes. 
So what's going on in this story? What does this say about God? Well, first off, it's providence. It is God working uh, through whatever means in order to accomplish his goal. Because what's unique and what's special about this is that actually um, the the girl, T T uh, Tamar, got pregnant. Now, it's not often that you find a person on the first time that they uh, they have sex to to get pregnant. It, it can occur, but it is it is a bit difficult. And so it was uh, the time of the month, the place, the the uh, the age and all of these things that move together that God provided in order for this child uh, to be conceived. And this child that is conceived is is a special child because if you if you've uh, um, looked through the genealogies of Jesus, man, we find that that Tamar is in it because uh, she has a special child that comes from this. And so that's God working through these um, these insane and crazy uh, ways. What does this say about man? I think it, it, it says that we do the wrong things for the right reasons. Now, oftentimes you see in scripture that, that people are doing the wrong things for the wrong reasons, for the, the, the evil of their heart. But there are times in which we as humans try and do the right thing to honor our families, to, to, to show uh, uh, respect and dignity or to many different reasons that these things happen, man, but we do the wrong thing. I think that um, that's tough because we as um, as humans, apart from God, because I, I don't think that she's doing this under the guise of the Lord, apart from God, fail. So how can we apply these truths to our lives? So how can we take these uh, uh, understandings of God's providence and his sovereignty working through things? And then us um, trying to do right, but still doing wrong. How, how can we um, use those in our lives? How can we live that out on a daily basis? I think it's important for us to understand that even in our mistakes, that God is working good. That don't mean we should be going out and commit mistakes and all that stuff. Uh, definitely not. Definitely not. But it does let us know that even in the past when we were doing these wrong things and we were serving ourselves rather than uh, serving the Lord, that he uses those things. He takes those things and and makes them where we can have maybe a testimony to his glory for others that may be going through that type of lifestyle or maybe going through that difficult situation. See, that's how God uses that. All those things in the past, man, he is working out something good so that his glory could be seen and our good can be manifested. But I also think that we should be uh, um, taking this and, and, and looking at how God's providence also is moving things that even when it seems like um, we're not uh, on the path of, of righteousness or even when it seems like uh, the, uh, uh, the things that we do just never seem to work out or to build up that those things also as well as something that God is using and manifesting for his glory. And then finally, man, I, I think that we should look back into the past and see what God has done and how he's produced good from the things that we've done wrong. Don't let the past uh, failures stop you or don't let the past failures um cause such a guilt that would stop you from moving forward and what God can do now in your life because what you've done in the past he is using for his glory 
for now and the future. I appreciate you guys for listening. And uh, I will see you in the next episode.